Okay then folks, as you can probably see I've got the uh, hats and Gladius in front of me. Uh, last time I had it out, I was getting problems with the uh, rifle not cocking right. Uh, which was creating misfeeds. Uh, the tolerances on this rifle are pretty fine to get it right. So I took the stock off and adjusted the trigger using the uh, three different uh, adjustment points. So I think I've got it about right. It probably needs some more testing. We'll soon find out if it's uh, gonna cock okay and cycle through the pellets all right. And we'll see how the trigger feels. But it is one of the uh, problems with this. I've got a feeling after firing thousands of rounds through it, the sears have started to uh, wear on it. So I might need to get some new parts, I don't know. But uh, I set a target up down range. I'm going to start off with the Cray Magnums, which is a hollow point weighing 18.21 grains. Then I'm going to use the Silcos and the Webley Acapel that both weigh 14.3 uh, grains. So uh, let's get on with the test. Okay then, starting off with the Cray Magnums. Santa Zero. That's a low. Get to the right. Okay, two four. So, I think we're about there, so we put uh, some more pellets through it. <clears throat> I 
so they, they seem to be grouping so appear to be an accurate pellet quite a big hollow point uh, the hollow point on it is wider than on the H&N Hunters so I don't know what the uh, distance they work out to but uh, I don't think I've done the play test on them either yet so I'll do probably four more shots and then I'll go for the uh, actual target that's better I'm actually going to go for it now so target the buzzer zero that's Didn't catch the seal that time. Did that time, I think. I did it. That's right, slipping again. That's the thing, it's I've, I've got a feeling. I do make the adjustments and then they actually move again. Uh, slipping on the sear. So we'll make adjustments and come back to it. Just uh, top the mag up. So, uh, first off, you need to get the stock off. And to do that, there's two screws underneath. One just there and one there. So you need to get a long screwdriver to get to this one. So once you've got the screws out, you then need to get the cheek piece off. So that wraps around the actual stock. And can take the action out and I say talking about tolerances there it is <coughs> got a piece of uh, metal pack in there that I put between the end of the stock and this because that can make a massive difference to when you pull the trigger believe it or not so the adjustments are right at the back there and you've got the one at the front and the one just behind it. <clears throat> now start off. I don't know if you can see it on this. Yes, you can. Little hole just there. As you see, when you pull back, I don't know if you can see it. It's supposed to lock onto that. It's it's slipping, so I'm going to do some slight adjustments on all of it. So that's going in a bit. Time. Just a bit more. I think what it did, it uh, <sighs> caught me my top. A bit more just to make sure it's in. No, no, so I'm not going to adjust. 
these. Seems to be okay. Let's make sure that's got that pack anymore. Ever did with that? There it is. I have had a couple there in the past, so. And also inside the stock these bits these bits here stick out you might need to rub them down a bit oh, i have and we're in So it can make all the difference like it was working when it was out of stock and this is what i'm saying when it's back in you can cock it up again it's a fine balance between getting a the trigger just right and it not working at all Seems to be okay now, so back to the mission in hand. target again okay so it's working all right now it's not misfeeding downside is triggers a bit heavy so that's a problem you make it too light and it just don't engage Three pallets in that. So uh, frustrating, really. 
There's a pellet in it, so. Come out. Okay. Hmm. Right. I'll try one more time. Let's see if we get lucky or not. Okay then, Crossman's. Already done. And then center zero. Okay, just want to come down a bit. Okay, just gonna go for it. Bottom right on target. Okay, so did well. I've got a strong wind today, so that makes a difference. So now we're going with Silco's that weigh exactly the same. And I've got all the same palette that just rebadged Silco for uh, Silco balls that broke up. Uh, and because of that, I'm going straight for the uh, super target. Oof. Okay. You can see it's, it's grouping, but it's grouping different to what the uh, the articles did. It's probably a different characteristic to the pellet. Not sure why every pellet's different, really. Didn't quite catch again. Not every time, but every now and again. So, definitely still needs working on. Uh, okay then. So that's the uh, 20 odd test out of the way, but that was basically just to see if I'd solve the problem with the cocking issue, but it's 
it's still there so I might have to strip the old rifle down look at the parts and see if they do need uh, upgrading but it, it's an accurate rifle and it shoots well when it's uh, set right but until I can get that sorted it's it's buggered the rifle up uh, probably at about six years now like I said, I put thousands of pellets through it, so something's wearing on it. So uh, that's it for this video. Just showing you a faulty Hatson Gladius and the places you go to uh, adjust it. And it's still, I mean, it, it's not doing it every time now, but it's still doing it. So whether they screws are moving, I might put Loctite on, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to strip it right there. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.